In our last episode, we found the nucleus, but before Grand Zealot Richter would let us in, he sent us to a spring and told us to drink from the water and then come back and tell him what happens. We drank from the water and saw a vision. A ghostly shadow brought us to a nearby Child of Adam shrine, wherein we found the Mother Icon. After bringing this back to Grand Zealot Richter, he allowed us inside and told us to present the icon to the High Confessor. Upon entering, we saw the High Confessor in the middle of his sermon. After the sermon ended, he walked inside his submarine, and we can now follow him inside to tell him all about the Mother Icon. Excuse me. Ah, I'd heard whispers of a new convert. Welcome, sister. How does it feel to take your place among Adam's chosen? More rads than I usually like. That's for damn sure. Ah, you do not bear Adam's blessing. No issue. A number of our brethren live so. Like I'm surrounded by fanatics. True devotion is often mistaken. I can assure you we are no fanatics. But we do have a singular purpose. Adam's chosen? This place, the nucleus, the island, Adam has claimed it all for us. He's chosen all but one blasted corner. It's an honor, High Confessor. I'm glad you feel as such. There are many who would squander Adam's grace. Let me ask you a question. You've been to Far Harbor, yes? Seen its barriers against Adam's holy fog? Its citizens' blasphemous refusal to vacate what is clearly his domain. What would you do with such a place? Is Far Harbor really that bad? Yes, sister. They are. I don't know what I'd do. Understandable. But when faced with an enemy who would see you hunted, beaten, and robbed of what is rightfully yours, there can be only one course of action. Fight back. Far Harbor's a hellhole. I'd wipe it out. Precisely. The only way to deal with an infection. Cleanse the wound and cauterize the flesh. You want to wipe out that entire town? Didn't know you were so bloodthirsty. I'd reach out to them. Try to make peace. Do you not believe we have tried? Sounds like peace would be better for everyone. This island is dangerous enough as it is. For years, my predecessor begged for peace, while Far Harbor fortified their bastion of heresy. We tried to help them, to bring them Adam's light. Many of our brethren ended up dying for it. But now that I am High Confessor, that time is over. All Adam's foes, whether Far Harbor cowering behind their precious condensers, or that ancient robot hiding away his memories within our very home, they will come to recognize Adam as the sole master of this island. But it is only through unity that we can succeed. Adam requires devotion from all his children. Embrace that, and you will do well here. Now, was there anything you required? I found this icon. The Grand Zealot said you'd be interested in seeing it. Is that the mother? So the whispers were true. You saw the mother of the fog. Many of Adam's children spend their whole lives wishing for such a boon. It would seem he expects great things from you, child. As will I. Now, was there anything else? Would you mind answering a couple questions for me? Certainly. What do you wish to know? What happened to the Confessor before you? Martin. No one knows. One night he was sleeping in his chambers in the vessel, and the next morning he'd simply vanished. The other zealots and I organized a party to try and find him, to no avail. I wouldn't be shocked if he took up in Far Harbor or fled to the south. His dedication to Adam had become questionable. He'd done nothing when Far Harbor executed one of our missionaries. So I dare say it's best that he fled. 
What happened to this missionary? A foul atrocity. Our good brother Andrews had decided to brave the fog and attempt to bring Adam's light to that ghastly town and remind the heathens of their trespasses. From what I hear, he'd barely spoken a word before they cut him down in cold blood for nothing more than his devotion. Beasts. I heard the children are responsible for the fog. Is that true? Of course. The fog predates our arrival on the island, certainly. But before us, it was but an occasional presence. Yet through our faith, our devotion to family, Adam saw fit to reach across the land, claiming for us more, year after year, until near all lay beneath his grasp. Now, was there something else I could answer for you? What can you tell me about the Mother of the Fog? The Mother is one of Adam's most revered messengers. Many years ago, when we were driven from Far Harbor, it was she who guided us through the wilds to this sanctuary. We might all have been lost if it wasn't for her. You should be honored she found you so interesting. How is it you came to this place? We were guided here many years ago. After our exile from Far Harbor, the first of us, my predecessor, Martin and I, had come north at the behest of Adam's great prophet, Confessor Cromwell, from a small refuge in the capital wastes. When we arrived on the island, we found a few souls receptive to Adam's message. Anna, the Archimist, was formerly Far Harbor's doctor before she found the light. But most... They thought us a menace. We were chased from the town, driven into the wilds, barely escaped with our lives. Some of us were never the same. It was only thanks to the grace of Atom that we survived, and finally found a place that we could call home. There's so much radiation on the island. How come people here don't get sick? Some do. But most of our family has been blessed at birth with an affinity for the glow. It's no more to us than a May rain. Warm. Comforting. It's why a place like this island truly is meant for his children. Others simply wither away while we gladly await division. What can you tell me about Division? Adam's greatest gift. Locked inside us all are billions of invisible worlds, waiting only to be touched by his glow in order to be born anew through Division. During the Great War, it was granted to many, though they certainly didn't realize it. But today it is often a slow process, taking years of exposure in order to be realized. We are all here to spend our lives seeking the promise of division, however long it may take. Now, did you have another question? I'd like to help the family. Is there anything I can do? Eager. There is a member of our little community I've suspected for some time now. My own inquiries have proven fruitless. But your relative newness will likely make it easier for you to sniff out the truth. I would have you investigate this person. Should you find proof of any heresy or disloyalty, you are to bring it to me. So you can be trusted and you'll be rewarded. What exactly am I looking for? Hard evidence of any plots against myself, the family, or disrespect towards Holy Adam. Such transgressions cannot be allowed to stand. You mentioned a reward? There is a relic, a sacred cowl, that I've been holding on to. Perform the deed to my satisfaction, and it's yours. I think I'm gonna pass. A shame, but understand you are passing up an important opportunity to prove you can be trusted. And those who cannot be trusted rarely last in this place. Consider it done. Superb. Bring whatever you find directly to me. Here, the person in question. Leave no stone unturned. 
This is a chance to prove your value to Adam. With that, we begin the quest, Witch Hunt. And Tectus gives us the High Confessor's note. On the note, we find a single word. Obear. So we need to track down this Obear to find out if she is really loyal to the children. And from High Confessor Tectus, we learned quite a lot. These children of Adam are none other than a branch of the very same children of Adam that the Lone Wanderer met in the Capital Wasteland. Looks like Confessor Cromwell's message has spread. And now we have more context to better understand that conversation that Avery and Alan Lee had after we defended the Hall in the very first episode. We used to have a peace with them until a certain hothead menace named Alan Lee. Now that's enough. That preacher came into the harbor saying that it was Adam's will that we lost our land. That it was Adam's goddamn will that we lost so many friends and family. And that the Adam would wipe this whole place clean of us. If it were up to me, you'd hang for what you did to that preacher, Alan. Avery accused Alan Lee of murdering a child of Adam missionary. This must be the very same Brother Andrews that High Confessor Tectus was talking about here. Did Alan Lee really murder Andrews for nothing more than Andrews spreading the good news of Adam? Or could it be that Tectus isn't telling us the full story? Maybe Brother Andrews really did threaten Far Harbor. In this room with High Confessor Tectus's throne, we see a lot of pre-war submarine machinery that the children have decorated with human skulls and glowing bottles of yellow fluid. We find one stim pack and some glowing blood packs, and near to a door that leads to a room where Tectus retreated to, we find a missile status terminal. Error. Firing system malfunction. Contact technician immediately. Containment breach detected. Evacuate to safe distance. Missile active. Launch key input required. So at some time before the war, there was a containment breach. The firing system malfunctioned and the launch key disappeared. But the nuclear payload is still intact. Moving into the northern bedroom, we see that this is Tectus's private chambers. High Confessor Tectus uses this for his own personal devotion to Adam. We don't find much but a bit of glowing fungus and a few containers filled with caps. In one shelf, we find a Nuka-Cola cherry next to some boxed foods. Out of Tectus's room and turning all the way around, we find two staircases bathed in red light that lead downstairs. This brings us to another level. We find the door to the other staircase going up, and between these two staircases is a room directly beneath Confessor Tectus's bedroom. Heading inside, we find bunks, but these pre-war seamen's bunks are now filled with skeletons. Dozens and dozens of human skeletons cover nearly every bunk. Were these corpses here when the children moved in? Or did the children put them here? They seem to venerate these people. We find candles and other votive offerings scattered amongst the bunks. And here we find children kneeling in contemplation. Brother? Ah, our family has gotten a little bigger. Welcome. I will count the bodies of the heretics I have burned. And for each one, I bring a smile on the lips of Adam. Okay. Well, we're learning a lot about these guys. Moving to the other end, we find even more cots lining the walls covered in skeletons. There's a metal box here. And at the northern end of this room, we find a bank of lockers with bobby pins and bottle caps inside. That's it for this room. Heading back out to the main room, we see a staircase going down to the left, a staircase going down to the right, and a terminal directly in front of us. We'll go down to the left for now. Here we find a door that leads to another bedroom. The bed is owned. We can't sleep here. On a cabinet against the southern wall, we find a military ammo bag, a good source of ballistic weave, a short radium rifle, a new weapon with Far Harbor. We'll cover that later. And a note, Brother Alders. I believe you're underestimating Brother Alders, Richter, and the hold Martin still has on him. Martin was weak and so is Alders, but there is a simple way to know the truth. 
Take Alders outside with Sister Harper. Ask the two of them to demonstrate their devotion to the family. I've no doubt Sister Harper will prove what Anders cannot. Tectus. So this is High Confessor Richter's room. And the test we witnessed upon arrival was Tectus's idea. Goodness, it's all abject loyalty or death here. After exploring Richter's room, we can head back to the main room and this time take the staircase down to the east. The heathen soul can only be made clean in Adam's fire. Oh, really? Well, that sounds lovely. Heading down, we open a door to the right. This one is not being used as a bedroom. Instead, it appears to be a storage room. In the corner, we find a footlocker, but it requires a key. What is it with all of these containers in Far Harbor that require special keys? After looting a single toolbox here, we can head back out into the main room. We see another door next to the terminal, which according to the map appears to lead to the reactor level of the ship. And next to this is that terminal, and we see that it's the Crypt Terminal. In this holy vessel, think on the sacrifices of our family, and recall the sins of wicked Far Harbor. So they're using this submarine as a crypt. The bodies we found in the bunks are those belonging to children of Adam who have died. Moving into the reactor room, we appear on a landing, going all the way around the reactor in the center of the room. Up here, we find a first aid kit on a barrel. There's nothing much else up here, so we can take a staircase down to the lower level. The reactor blinks with a red light. And walking around down here, amongst a number of toxic radioactive barrels, we find Sister Aubert, the very woman we're looking for. Pardon me. If you're looking for the crypt, you took a wrong turn. My job to take care of this place. You touch anything, I'm taking the limb. Understand? What can you tell me about the sub? Never launched anything, if that's what you're asking. Never even made it out of the bay during the Great Division. All the better. Preserved it for us. Great Division? What's that? Adam's Great Division? 200 years ago, thousands, millions across the world, reborn in an instant, given over to Adam. These days, we take the scenic route. Extended exposure to the glow. <laughs> Long division, huh? But what about the sub's nukes? You, you can't use those? Launch key's missing. System can't be hacked. Trust me, we've tried. You said it was your job to take care of this place? The vessel, yes. One of the most powerful sources of glow on an island full of it. My job to make sure it's looked after. You get in the way of that, you'll have to answer to Adam. But first, you'll have to answer to me. <laughs> Adam will get what's left. Why build a crypt in the sub? Don't you have the entire base? Keeps our fallen brethren near his glow. Near their family. Only spot a child should spend eternity. A true honor. Denied to too many. Why would someone be denied a place in the crypt? You've been out there, right? This place. It's dangerous. Take a wrong turn in the fog? Sorry, brother. Lost to the family. Wander too close to the wrong settlement. Lost to the family. Adam, help you, you look at Tectus the wrong way. And here at last, we get our first indication that perhaps Tectus has a reason for us to talk with Sister Aubert. We can try to press her on this. You don't like Tectus, huh? I've got no problem with Tectus. Fine leader. Now, uh, suppose I should get back to it. Not saying anything else to you on the subject. Tectus is a superb confessor. The best. But I think you should go. By failing this speech check, our job becomes a bit harder. But if we pass it... You don't like Tectus, huh? Who wouldn't? Man's a damn... Uh, that is, uh, I... Uh, I like Tectus just fine. But I... Uh, I think you should go. With that, we've made Sister Aubert incredibly nervous. She doesn't really want to talk with us much anymore. Better not hear any rumors flying around. I didn't do anything wrong. Tectus is a damn fine confessor. Best we've had. Excuse me, Sister Aubert. Stringing me along with stupid questions. Nothing more to say to you. But perhaps this slip is all the information we need to deliver to Tectus. Heading back upstairs, we can tell Tectus what we've learned. I spoke to Aubert and got her to openly admit her disdain for you. Hmm. K. 
can't say I'm surprised. Though I highly doubt I'm the only member of the family in that group. You should continue your search. Return if you find something more substantial. But that's not enough information for High Confessor Tectus. We need to find some concrete evidence that Aubert is plotting against the family, or at least has committed heresy. After looting all of the containers on this lower floor where we found Aubert, we find one door opening up into a southern chamber. We again arrive at a top level. We find a bunch of junk up here, and going all the way around, we can take a staircase to the bottom level. Down here, all we find are barrels of highly toxic nuclear waste. Perhaps this was part of the containment breach that the US military was in the process of cleaning up when the bombs dropped. Taking the western staircase up to the other side of this western platform, we find a box, some scrap, and a bed. This must be Sister Aubert's bed. She has her own little shrine to Adam here with skulls and yellow liquid. But if we examine closely, we see the edge of a paper note peeking out beneath her mattress. This is Edgar's note. My dearest Aubert, you worry too much. Even if the High Confessor is still having trouble getting over my past closeness with Martin, Richter is a friend. If there was a problem, the Grand Zealot would tell me. That said, I think you and I should continue using our footlocker in the storage room to share messages. You know how gossip spreads in this place. I wouldn't want you getting drawn into any undue intrigue. And in case yours has wandered off again, I've hidden the spare key behind a bench in the entryway locker room, just in case. Counting the moments until we're together, Edgar. So Aubert had a boyfriend named Edgar who was part of the family, but was too close to the former High Confessor, Martin. Martin, whom Tectus told us, just abandoned the family here, whom he suspected of not being wholly devoted to Adam. This friendship Edgar had with Martin can explain why Tectus would distrust Edgar, but could it be enough to explain why Tectus would distrust Aubert? And why would Edgar's relationship with Martin cause Aubert to dislike Tectus? When done, we can find our way back to the reactor room and ask Sister Aubert about it. Sister Aubert, you again. This still isn't the crypt, and I shouldn't need to remind you our policy on touching things. Rumor is, you and Brother Edgar used to be close. What happened to him? Edgar? <sighs> Not my job to answer rumors. My job to preserve the vessel. So if you don't mind. And she completely shuts down. She sounded surprised that we mentioned Edgar's name, but then she refused to talk any more about it. But from the note he had sent to her, we learned that they had exchanged messages in a footlocker. And we now know where to find the key. Heading out of the vessel, we can move down the boardwalk across the bridge and towards the entryway. We didn't really have a chance to explore this area when we arrived because Tectus was busy with his sermon. Opening the first door to the right, we find a bathroom with a child praying. Excuse me, brother. Zealot Ware seems so interested in Brother Devon's fast. I wonder if he's thinking about joining him. This adds an optional task to our quest. Help Zealot Ware. All right, sounds good, but one thing at a time. In one of the stalls, we find a wheelchair, and in the wheelchair, a bunch of skulls with candles below them. Heading out and opening another stall, we find a skeleton splayed out on one of the toilets. Is this a child of Adam or a skeleton they found here? They put a bunch of candles around it, and in the final stall, we find a toilet with a toothbrush and some scissors on the rim. Oh god, I hope they don't groom themselves here. Near to the urinals, we find another mattress, wonderful place for a nap, and glowing fungus growing from the urinals. But no bench, no key, so this must be the wrong room. Heading back to the hallway, we pass beneath what appears to be a decontamination arch. Near to this is a toolbox and a big red button, pushing it. The system is malfunctioning, and next to this is a note. Repairs in progress. Repairs in progress. Sister Mai, reading this note, adds another optional portion to our quest. Help Sister Mai. All right, we'll track her down in a bit. But first things first, we've got to find this bench. Continuing north, we find another room to the right. 
It's the locker room. We find all sorts of caps and ammunition in the trash can, the lockers. There's a duffel bag with pre-war money on the floor, a lunch pail with a tarberry and money, and against the western wall, we find some benches. There's glowing fungus in this potted plant, but where's the key? Closing the door, we can look behind, and there it is, the footlocker key. With the key in hand, we can access their footlocker, but which footlocker? Well, there is that one footlocker we found that required a key in that one storage room. Heading back to the vessel, we can go downstairs and take the first staircase to the right. We find the footlocker where we left it, behind those cardboard boxes. And sure enough, the key opens the footlocker. Inside, we find Aubert's note. Reading it in our Pip-Boy, Edgar, Grand Zealot says it was an accident. You wandered off alone, and he couldn't get to you in time. Couldn't bring you back. He's lying. I know, because you'd never do something that foolish. None of them will ever admit to it. But this was Tectus. He had you killed because he's terrified of Martin. Because Tectus knows Martin was the only one worthy of running this family. Adam above, I need you, Edgar. You tell me what to do right now. What keeps coming to mind... I know is a bad idea. Until we're together again, Aubert. So Tectus had Richter kill Edgar while they were away on a mission outside the nucleus. And they lied to Sister Aubert, telling her that he simply wandered off and died in the fog. It all makes sense. Tectus wanted Edgar gone because of Edgar's relationship with the previous confessor, Martin. And Aubert hates Tectus because she knows that Tectus killed Edgar. With this knowledge in hand, we can head back to the reactor level, go downstairs, and confront Sister Aubert. Sister Aubert, I found this note you penned about the High Confessor. Something like this could get you in a lot of trouble. My note? My note? Oh, listen, I, uh, I, I was mad. The High Confessor is a good man. I, I, I wouldn't... I, Please, please, just, just, just let me have it back, and then I'll get rid of it. We can pretend this never happened. Please. Here we find a number of options that alter the outcome of this quest. First, we can convince her to flee. Look, no matter what I do, you're not safe here. You need to leave. Now. Shit, you're right. Shit. Just, um, give me a little time before you say anything, all right? Please. With that, she turns around and runs off. We can try to talk to her while she's fleeing. Sister Aubert. Have to get away from here. Far away. Thank you. For the warning. Ammo, blankets, fire, water, food. Damn. A lot to find. Choosing this option doesn't unlock any dialogue options with Tectus. It just means that no matter what happens, Aubert won't be here for Tectus to murder. Or, we can agree to lie to Tectus, and we can give her the note to destroy. Don't worry. I'll tell him everything's above board. Here, take this and destroy it. Oh, Adam above. Thank you. Thank you. Just, when you report back, tell him I'm loyal, all right? Please. With that, we lose the hard evidence, which means we can't turn it into Tectus. We can still get the quest reward at this point by passing a speech check, but if we can't pass that check, our only option is to say... Actually, I wasn't able to turn up anything on her. Is that so? What a shame. Hmm. You've given me much to consider on who I can trust. And I do believe I'll be keeping my cowl. You may go. We complete the quest, but we don't get the reward because Confessor Tectus now distrusts us. Or we can consider what Aubert said and maybe try to get some caps out of her. I might be inclined to help you if I heard the jangle of some caps. Yeah, here. Everything I've got. So, you'll keep this secret? Let me have my note. I'll consider it. Sure, sure, whatever you want, but please, don't do anything rash, all right? Choosing this option, Aubert continues with her duties. She sticks around, but she's terrified. Wish I'd never written that damn thing. Anyone hears about this, I'll be branded for life. Excuse me, Sister Aubert? Uh, Edgar, 
you tell me what to do? Then we can head upstairs to High Confessor Tectus' room to tell him what we've learned. Excuse me, High Confessor? Hello, my child. Was there something you required? I wanted to talk to you about Sister Aubert. Hmm, yes. Tell me. What did you find? What's going to happen to her? I suppose that all depends on what you found, child. But only a fool would allow a potentially deadly wound to fester. Now, are you going to tell me what you unearthed? With the note still in our possession, we can hand it in to Tectus. I found this note. Here. Let me see. I knew it. You've done well in bringing this to me. I will send men to collect our good sister. We complete the quest, we get the reward, but we don't actually see men go collect Aubert. However, when we leave the vessel, the next time we come back, we find Aubert missing. Or we can pass a medium speech check to lie. I looked into her, but it seems that Sister Aubert's loyal. You've got nothing to worry about. Come now, child. You cannot expect me to believe such things. What did you really find? Really? Hmm. I must say I'm surprised. Well, you've nonetheless lifted a weight from my shoulders. Here, for your effort. Your service to Atom will not be soon forgotten. In this way, we can complete the quest and get the reward, the same as if we turned in the note. If we choose this option and head back to Sister Aubert, she's extremely grateful. Adam above, you're a good one. Just our little secret. Sister Aubert, don't know what you told Tectus, but I'm still here, so it must have been good. Glory to Adam. The reward we get is the Inquisitor's Cowl. The wearer's intelligence increases with radiation. It only provides a damage resist of two, and it covers our entire face, so we can't wear masks or glasses with it. The legendary effect grants us plus one intelligence for every 100 rads we're dosed with, but the bonus maxes out at plus four to intelligence. Even if we take more radiation damage, we can't get more than a plus four bonus. But the best thing about it is how it looks. This is one of the coolest looking helmets in the entire game. It appears to be made out of a colander, gas mask, goggles, and vehicle exhaust tailpipes. It's a great little piece. And with that, we've ingratiated ourselves with High Confessor Tectus. He now considers us one of the faithful. To increase our reputation with these children, we need to complete some of the other quests available here, three of which we already know about. We need to speak with Zealot Ware, Sister Mai, and Grand Zealot Richter. Remember, he said that he had a little task for us. Plus, we need to explore this nucleus to see what else we can find here. We'll pick up with this exploration in my next episode. I publish many videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you already have, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Glory to Atom. If you two are disgusted by the heresy of Far Harbor, you can find this design on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. It comes on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and Patreon patrons are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to members and patrons, you have my sincerest thanks. You make this channel possible. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos. Keep the faith. Must, must continue.